Saturday, August 31st, 2013. One ounce of silver is $24. One Bitcoin is $135. Peace News Now is brought to you in part by friendsofweusecoins.com. Learn about Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. Until now, fundraiser widgets have only been available for PayPal and credit cards, which are loaded with fees from the antiquated 20th century banking system. Enter BitcoinChipIn.com. BitcoinChipIn.com allows users to create professional-looking Bitcoin fundraiser widgets completely free. But they do take donations. Go check it out for yourself. BitcoinChipIn.com. And if you don't have a wallet yet, I recommend getting started at blockchain.info. Some call blockchain.info the most secure web-based wallet because the encryption happens right in your browser. Fox News reported yesterday that agents of the federal government began enforcing a policy recently that requires churches to obtain special use permits in order to baptize in public water. As part of the same permit process, the National Park Service also mandated that churches give them 48 hours advance notice of pending baptisms. This immediately caused controversy among pastors like Dennis Purcell, who said, quote, If the Holy Spirit is working on Sunday morning, you're going to baptize on Sunday afternoon. You may not know ahead of time. Many Christians believe the Bible commands new followers of Christ to be baptized immediately after their conversion. It's a public expression and celebration of their newfound faith in Christ. Agents of the state told pastors they are protecting the park from the people, or as they put it, quote, maintain natural resources and quality visitor experiences. But police wouldn't arrest anyone for performing a baptism without a permit, right? While no one has been cuffed and caged for performing a baptism without a permit, in 2011, agents of the state did shut down an Ocean Church baptism in Miami. This story brought to you by friends of WeUseCoins.com. Learn about Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. The New York Times reported yesterday that the series Syrian president's son posted a strange and provoking diatribe to Facebook. Although apparently liked and commented on by several who appear to be the children and grandchildren of the Assad regime, it's unlikely the post is authentic. As the Times itself notes, quote, The owner of the account wrote that he was a graduate of Oxford University and a player for the Barcelona soccer team, neither of which would be likely to appear on the resume of an 11-year-old boy in Damascus. This may offer a glimpse into the mindset of Syria's ruling elite as the country braces for a potential Western invasion. Here's an excerpt from the post, allegedly by Hafez Assad, quote, I just want them to attack so much because I want them to make this huge mistake of beginning something that they don't know the end of it. Ron Paul commented on the unfolding situation in Syria on Fox Business this Wednesday. In the interview, he called the recent chemical attack a false flag, likely carried out by the U.S.-backed Al-Qaeda-filled rebels. Quote, I think it's a false flag. Why don't we ask about the Al-Qaeda? Why are we on the side of Al-Qaeda right now? Good questions, Ron Paul. Meanwhile, JG Vibes over at IntelliHub.com reports yesterday that the primary witness that the mainstream media is using as a source in Syria has been caught staging fake news segments. Recent video evidence proves that Syria Danny, the supposed activist who has been begging for military intervention on CNN, is really just a paid actor. Peace News Now does not deny the death and violence happening in Syria right now. However, in your own pursuit of the facts, be aware that the mainstream media is scripted and staged propaganda. Ending on a positive note, congratulations Congratulations, activists. Weeks ago, Peace News Now reported on four-year-old Rosie, whose family was being threatened over her backyard garden. Their property managers claimed the federal government doesn't allow them to alter their landscaping to include a garden because they live in government housing. After food freedom activists generated a maelstrom of publicity highlighting this gross infringement, the USDA's Rural Development Agency responded that it has no such policy and Rosie's family will be be left to garden in peace. Peace News Now is on the next news network and is brought to you in part by friends of WeUseCoins.com. I want you to share this episode, and if you enjoyed it, send some Bitcoin to donate.peacenewsnow.com. I'm Derek J, reminding you that peace is the way. <laughs>